All right, we're gonna turn the brake rotors on this 01, 02 actually, Lexus 430, which in the door sticker, it says it's a Toyota, so we'll go by that. Uh, you wanna get the dial caliper, turn it on, make sure you zero it out. 1.102 is throw away on these, so 1.102, Throwaway, so we've got 58 thousandths we can take off of these. Um, let me see if I showed you that. Right there, we got 50, 50, 55 thousandths. We'll just say we can take off of these. Okay, you want to make sure you get your uh, brake rotor torque down to specs, which on this is 95 foot pounds. Make sure you put your attachment on here. Then we're going to put our lathe attachment, which I had to make a bracket. And then we'll get it hooked up and I'll show you how all that works. Alright, we've got our first lateral bracket on. We'll go ahead and uh, get the machine part on. Alright, we're hooked up. The machine tells you which way the rotor has to turn. If you turn the rotor this way, it will rip the bits off. Okay? So, we got to make sure the machine is centered. Okay, so the bits are in the center, so you can get an even cut. We're all bolted down, all snug down, tightened up. Make sure we are on the machine. Okay, we're all bolted up. Make sure you're centered on the bits. As far as the machine goes, we're on, we're tightened up. It tells you which side you have this bolted on, the way the rotor turns. If you turn the rotor the wrong way, you will bust the bits. Okay, let me get this centered up and we'll come back. Alright, we've got the machine hooked up, we've got it lined up in the middle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run the bits in. It does it automatically with the... Okay, we're hitting again for some darn reason. Okay, there we go. Now we're going in. Alright, run them in until you're almost off the inside, because the inside will be the narrowest. Okay, then what you want to do is you want to turn the bit until you just touch. Come out here, turn the bit until we just touch. Okay, if we can get there. Okay, we're just touching. Okay, how much farther do we got to go here? Alright, we're just touching both sides and we're going to run them all the way in. Alright. I'm going to go one click and one click and then I'm going to hit it on the fast speed and it's going to cut automatically. Okay. The speed light's blinking. And then what we'll do is we'll cut it a little ways and see what it looks like. And then uh, we may have to run her back in and make an adjustment. Okay? So we need to look and see what we're doing on the inside. Let's get down here without bumping anything. I'm getting metal shavings in my eyes. Okay, yeah, we're doing good on the inside. Okay, you can hear it warp, and it goes skip, 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 skip. So I'm sure by the time we get to the end, we're going to have to, you know, make a recut. But that's fine. You always want to check, you know, after we do this cut, you want to hit it with the mic again. Make sure you're not, you know, overcutting it. Because once you overcut it, you got to throw them out. Um, basically the law. So there we go. Alright, that's our first cut. We're at 1.145 and 1.120 or 1.102 is throwaway, so we're still good on that. We'll have to look here in a minute what it is. Now what we'll do is turn the feed off, run it all the way back in. Now you absolutely have to make sure you use the right brackets because this thing has to be perfectly parallel. Because if it's a little crooked and you go to cut, 
it's going to gouge on the inside. See if it's this way, it's going to gouge on the inside and it's going to absolutely just quit cutting on the outside. So you want to make sure, I mean if this thing starts cutting funny and you know you just don't think it looks right, stop. Okay, a little too far. We're going to go one click and one click. Get it on auto feed. And this will be our last cut. There we go. Alright, the ins and the outs to this machine. Um, if you have any run out in the wheel bearing, any run out, you know, with this bearing mated to this rotor, you're actually turning this rotor and turning the run out basically out of which is the wobble out of the bearing and out of the, the, the mating surface of the brake rotor. Um, whereas if you take them off of here and there's a little run out with the bearing, you put it on a machine, you're just truing the brake rotor up and then you're going to stick it back on, say, a slightly crooked bearing and you've still got a wobbly brake rotor. Okay? The outs or the downfall to this is it takes about an hour to set it up, maybe 30, 45 minutes to an hour to set it up, depending. This was an extreme case because we didn't have, this is what our end result rotor is supposed to look like. Okay. There we go. Nice and pretty. And it looks that way on both sides, by the way. 